On today's Transport Evolved, we go where we've never gone before. Gatwick, London, to test drive the Tesla Model S. Well, I'm not gonna be test driving the Tesla Model S, but my American guest is, because she's never driven a Tesla Model S before. Coming up next on Transport Evolved. Certainly not uh, doing a show. This is no. quite normal. I mean, Mark and I have done this a couple of times. Uh, but essentially, this is this is Sunday show. Uh, we are recording it um, on Friday the 10th. But this is the show for Sunday the 12th of October 2014. We're going to have the same usual Transport Evolve show. We're just not in the studio. We're in the car driving. Uh, I'm recording this today because you're over. And despite contrary uh, opinions, my studio is very small. 40 square foot and it's big enough just for me to stand in so we decided that this would be a better way of getting uh, Deb on the, the show right yes and here I am in the UK I've, it's been 42 years since I've been here and what a great way to come back <laughs> and uh, be with Nikki uh, I appreciate you having me and what a thrill to be here and see you live are you I don't excited have to I am excited are you excited about to going to see Tesla oh Anna? very because you didn't expect this to happen no, did you I mean you, we, you talked agenda. about coming down to Bristol and being yeah, on the show right, right, right. Um, but then we got a last minute call as Tesla is wont to do going would you like to come and see the Gatwick store opening and I said, well, can I bring in a plus one with me? I said, of course. And it only took me negative three nanoseconds to say yes. Are you kidding me? Uh, so instead of recording it on the Sunday in a cramped studio with two of us, uh, we're recording it in a cramped car on a Friday, a Friday morning. Uh, so we're going to talk about some of the news. Uh, if I'm a little tired, please forgive me. It's because I've been up since three... Uh, 3.50 in the morning and it's still early in the morning and I'm, I've am i got lots of coffee. Um, My excuse is just jet lag. Yeah, okay. I'm over it, but right. jet lag for me. We can do that. So, so we're... <laughs> We're on our way, uh, we're on our way to the Tesla store and I suppose the best thing to talk about now is the announcement. <laughs> Mr. Musk's D. Have you seen Mr. Musk's D? Uh, I, I saw that tweet and I saw the very mysterious picture which looked an awful lot to me like a Model S on the bottom. Yeah, the with lights, a D. But it had the D over <gasps> There's it. There's a Bond bug going the other oh, way. You it? missed oh, it. it. Oh, those there are awesome. There was another one and there was oh. something. Anyway, I just Sorry. passed you in the highway. It's like, and look, here is a, an Ibiza which I've never heard of. But I'm in the UK. Hey, what do I know? Yeah. Well, it, it, the funny thing is, I do this with whoever I'm with. I'm yes. driving along, you know, it could be uh, anybody. Well, it's and a, it's and we're driving driver. along. Oh, yeah. We just go, oh, look, oh, look at that. That's a really rare car. Well, my thing to do in, in the US is to be driving my leaf along and say to my boyfriend, oh, look, it's a leaf, it's a leaf. <laughs> a leaf, just like that. I don't know why I say it like that. A leaf, because it used to be so exciting, because there weren't many. Now yeah. we have more of them and more model S's. So I, I do we do get too. excited. We're less excited now. And, less um, excited now. Yeah. Well, I, and I just want to say, I'm looking around to the road just to see what different kinds of cars are in the UK. And it's a really darn good mix. Um, if I wasn't wasn't on the left hand side of the road, I would feel like I was almost anywhere. Yeah, it's you know, it's pretty got pretty. Fords and Volvos and UK cars and Morris Miners and everything. Leafs and, and lots of Ford Transit Connects and um, the Vauxhall, which I guess is a GM brand, but I hadn't seen it before because well, I don't think we have this in the US. No, you don't. A Ford no. Fiesta. Um, a real mix of cars. And, and yeah, cars big, from different countries as well. You'll trucks, see lots of different... And big, fairly sizable trucks. Yeah. Um, other places I've been in, in, in Europe, at least in the EU, haven't had trucks quite that big. So, <laughs> um, yes, anyway. Blah, so, blah. back to the D. Back Announcement the D. made early this morning, Friday Very morning. Um, and as we predicted, D stands for dual motor. Now, I think that just means two Model S motors, one in the front, one in the back, which is awesome. 3.2 second 0 to 60 says Musk. I don't know if that's for the performance. I guess that's for the performance version, which is yeah, I don't know. I don't know where we go with that. But but um, that's pretty sexy. It is pretty sexy. Uh, I'm assuming it's some kind of torque vectoring all-wheel drive setup, which is very nice. 
sure-footedness. We like sure-footedness, that's excellent. And then um, also, uh, the thing, that, that was the, the D, mm -hmm. and it took him all of about five minutes to announce that. Although he did have a robot arm which came up, which is pretty cool. <laughs> and then he announced, um, then he announced the something else which was autonomous drive technology. Now Tesla's handled this really badly because it's been making these cars with autonomous drive technology fitted, or autopilot features pre -fitted. fitted, pre-fitted for a couple of weeks. And you know, I've, I've seen people say, hey, my car's got weird sensors on it that I just picked up. Hmm. And of course it's because it's got all this new technology on it. Um, now, it turns out that the sensors are like the hardware that you fit and then the features I think are eventually going to be added over time. Kind of like when you get a computer that has um, the, capa the future capacity to have several memory or whatever. 12, yeah, 12 different processes, but it only comes with six. But as they yeah. update things, well, kind of like these, you know, your smartphone that gets yeah. updates all the time. Um, so the Tesla's doing the same thing. So that means that a car right now doesn't have this automatic drive. And we need to probably explain the automatic drive isn't necessarily driving down the highway, but it might be getting the car from your, your garage to your front door in time. Yeah, he talked about and, that. He said, oh yeah, eventually we want to have the, if you, it, but he said only if you're on private land. Well, that would make sense. <laughs> so it's obviously they start. want to avoid the, lit, uh, the litigation. I can't imagine how they're going to do this. How are they going to interface with Google that's working on their own self-driving car? I don't know. That, I don't that, know. That, that, that but but the idea is the idea is that you tell your car, you give your car your calendar, and then your calendar, your car knows when you need to leave, so it could get out of the driveway and get to. You. The thing that, that they haven't talked about is how the car is going to be plugged in. And Elon Musk jokingly said, "Oh, maybe we could have a robot arm doing that." <laughs> which, if you watch the end of the show, that's going to be our and finally today, which is a real thing. Which made me just laugh out loud at sort of four yeah. o'clock in the morning while my kids and wife are still asleep uh, upstairs. So I wasn't very really popular. Um, <laughs> I'm just laughing because I, I, what if you ha don't have a calendar or you need help? I want the car to actually make the list for me. That's what I want. But we're not there yet, are we? we you want you want an assistant mode. <laughs> an assistant mode. I'm sorry. Go ahead. That would be awesome. Maybe I'll be that would be awesome. I actually like that idea. I think that would that would be great. Uh, so anyway, the, the idea of this is, you know, eventually Tesla will bring this autonomous drive tech, autopilot drive technology. Uh, importantly, Musk said it wasn't, didn't mean that you could fall asleep at the wheel. Well, yeah. At this point, probably now, I think Google's trying to make it so that you really can fall yeah. asleep at the wheel. So it's going to be kind of assistance technology, self-driving assistance technology, rather than, you know, we're going to let you drive everything. Uh, technology's gonna do all the hard work. Don't you worry, this is fine. Um, which, well, it's gonna be interesting. It's going to be very interesting. It's going to be very interesting. Oh, he wants me to go off here. There's, a, there's an accident or something up ahead. Whereas so I need to concentrate on changing. We're going, now well, this is exciting. Yes. Instead of going down the M4, we're going down the M3 and then we're gonna cut through these little back roads. Because there's an accident. And just like the UK driving motor code, which I've been studying on my smartphone, <laughs> I have. I'm serious. I'll have to show it to you. <laughs> you have seen it before. Yes. I've seen it quite a bit too. Well, it's not handy to have the apps, but when it says things like that, pay attention to the Highway Patrol Agency. I forget what it's called. Highway Agency person? We call it the Highway Patrol in the States. Or the Sheriff. Oh, you see, now it's cleared. So I'm actually going to get back on there. <laughs> Darn, I wanted to take a detour. Oh, well. oh it's, it's clearing now, so I think we're. I think we're, I'm going to be daring. Let's see what it says. Uh, it's slightly less because it's be slightly more direct. Hopefully, and watch us get stuck in traffic. I love the name Basingstoke. Basingstoke. It just yes. seems to me there's been fictional novels I've read with the Count of Basingstoke. <laughs> That is a fun part for me, being in the UK, is seeing all these names that I've read for years in either history or just fiction, any sort of bodice ripper novel about yeah. whatever. A lot, so many of them take place in England in, in the mythical thing, and just seeing the names that people have plucked from the British map and actually seeing them be real and not something made up like Basingstoke. No offense to the counts and earls of Basingstoke. I'm not sure what the period. I get a bit confused as a US about the 
peerage order. No, no. I, I live here and I get confused. Like, so, what is yeah. between, this was a, in the UK crossword puzzle that I was doing. I actually successfully did about two thirds of a UK crossword puzzle, which surprised me because some of the, refer the references, some of them are universal, but some of them are so different. But it, one that got me was what's, what's between a baron and an earl? A duke. I don't is know. That, is a duke between a baron? I thought a duke was below. Was oh, there. I don't know. Maybe, maybe, program. maybe the viewers can tell us. So, uh, we're nearly there. Okay. It looks like it's going to be raining soon, which I don't like the look of. Mm. But hopefully we'll get you behind the wheel of a Tesla Model S. I don't know if you knew that. But no. we are going to get you <laughs> behind the wheel of the Tesla Model S. And, um, are you going to pull a rabbit out of your hat? Yeah, maybe. <laughs> uh, but without me, that's the important thing. Oh, um, oh uh, so you can drive a Tesla Model S. I'm going I to be honored. do other fun things. And, uh, We'll come back later, but first we're gonna have an ad break. If you haven't uh, been to our shop yet at Transport Evolved, you should. Why have you not been to our shop? You can go to our shop at www.transportevolved.com and click on the link there for shop and you can get your own swag like this. I've got my own swag. Another surprise, by the way, I've got one of these for you. Oh. What, not the hoodie, but I've got one of these for you. Oh, excellent. So I've, I've got one for you, which I will give you on Sunday morning at breakfast. Uh, we're going out for breakfast on Sunday yes, morning with yes, wonderful yes. Mr. Mark. Uh, so um, we, Mr. Will Mark give, we will give you one of those. Um, and uh, so you can have one yourself if you go to www.transportfold.com and click shop. Uh, it's not quite like this because these are special ones, mm -hmm. special ones that only special, special people get. Uh, but uh, if you want to support us, go to the shop and look at the variety of different logoed things That's you can okay. get. I'm used to being sub special. I'd love I'd love to tell I'd love to tell you that that, that um, Dennis well you're getting one of these ones you see. Oh I'm you're getting, getting one of those ones. Now Dennis is uh, Dennis is one of our fantastic fans and correspondents on the West Coast and he sent me a photo last night at 3 a.m. in the morning of him wearing his Transport Evolve t-shirt at the Tesla Model S reveal event. Oh, excellent. How cool is that? So thank excellent. you very much for that, Dennis. Uh, and if you want to be like Dennis, go to the shop and buy one straight away. And uh, thank you for your continued support of the show. So hello, SIVA, Seattle Electric Vehicle Association. I am in the UK, your friend Deb Seymour here. This is Matt from the Tesla store, the brand new opened Tesla store in at south of Gatwick. Where are we, Matt? We're in- We're in Crawley. Crawley. Tesla Gatwick, just uh, one mile from Gatwick Airport. All right, from Crawley, UK, a mile from Gatwick Airport. I get to test drive a Tesla, but first Matt's gonna show me a few things about how the Tesla Model S works in general, and then we'll cope with the other side of the road. <laughs> <laughs> okay, great stuff. So. The main feature which everyone is drawn to is this very large 17 inch touchscreen display. So what we wanted to do is develop a system which is intuitive to use, that can always be updated um, and is future proof. So anything that we bring in the future can instantly be updated remotely. So this car is always connected um, via 3G SIM card. So always connected to the internet. Excellent. So it means that as a screen we can see here we have full um, Google Maps display. So it works just the same as normal Google Maps. We can zoom, we can twist, we can turn. And the really cool feature, compared to normal sat navs, is you can use the Google search function. So you don't need to necessarily know, need to know the exact postcode where you're going, just where you're going. So for example, Wembley Stadium. Excellent choice. Excellent choice. Miami Dolphins fan? Yeah, sure. Just there a few weeks ago. So we just do Wembley Stadium and it sets it there. The cool feature is that we've got the Google Maps, which runs off 3G, but we've also got the maps on the hard drive. So if you are in the Lake District and you've got no 3G signal, don't worry, we've, all the maps are saved on the hard drive. But the cool feature with it is that we've got live traffic updates that we Excellent. can see, green, yellow, red. So the, it will automatically reroute itself to avoid any key traffic, take you the fastest route. All, yep, go on. How does it do with London double-decker buses? Uh, normally quite well. <laughs> <laughs> I just had to say that. It's hard to see uh, in London because you've got the big buses. It is a challenge it's sometimes, a challenge yeah. To see around them. It certainly I is a challenge. I noticed drivers when I was walking around going, <laughs> and they're natives. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> Back to you, Matt. Um, so also all of the charging points are live updated onto this, as are our service centers and other key information. So if you're out and about, we can see, for example, just here, by Beast Voltage, there is actually a fast charging point which we can head to if we wanted to. 
I don't know if you're going to want to take me that far. I'm on the other side of the road. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so aside from the navigation, we have our media. Uh, so we have uh, radio, AM and FM, and we can also have internet radio, digital radio, connect it to our, uh, our own Bluetooth media uh, through our iPhone. Um, it's got a, uh, I think it's a 12 speaker Dolby surround sound system. Nice. So it's, it's really cool when you can uh, localize the noise. So if it's just a driver, localize just the noise here or for the kids in the back. How, would you remind me how many airbags the Tesla Model S has? Um, we'll have to double check. I think it's 12. Okay. Uh, but we'll double check. Well, you've outdone Nissan. They have nine in my okay. Leaf, which I thought for a little tiny Leaf is pretty it's good. Pretty it's pretty good, not, yeah. Leaf isn't tiny. It's somewhere between small and mid-sized. Yeah. So Model S actually broke the record for the safest car tested in America. I heard that. The, it, 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 uh, yeah. A 5.4 5 rating out of five. Yeah. So um, quite good. It's my understanding they uh, broke broke the meter on the That's right, <laughs> That's yeah. interesting thing. So, uh, good to know, especially with an American driver in the UK. <laughs> Great, so aside from our media, we're always connected to the internet. So if there are two people driving the car, one could be checking their Facebook and the other person looking at the maps. And the cool thing is that you can twist and turn the pages. So I was just recently looking at our Tesla stock. And we can also make one page fully large as well. We can also look at our energy consumption over a 30 mile, 15 mile or five mile average. So basically when we see these large peaks is when accelerating hard, using more energy. And when we see the green, it's actually where we've entered into regenerative braking. So when you take the foot off the accelerator, okay. the car will actually start charging itself, using its own right, momentum to the charge, which is useful. We're actually putting mileage back into the range. We've got reversing camera, which comes in automatically when you reverse, but you can you can have it any time you like, and full Bluetooth connectivity, Excellent. as you would expect. So my phone's automatic connected as I've jumped in the car. Um, recent calls, contacts, dialers, usual things, all really useful. Another really cool feature is that you can set your personal settings for this car. So my colleague Joachim was driving this car recently and his settings are still safe, so that includes your seat positioning, um, your favorite music, how you like to set up your car, etc. So if there are two people who are often using the car, you're not having to fit around with the buttons each time. And your spouse is six foot five and you're five foot two. That's yeah. helpful. Yeah, exactly. So I'll just quickly show you the controls. So we have our control button here, which brings okay. up other things such as how we lock and unlock the car, how we have our lights, so just keep on auto. We have our steering mode, comfort standard. I personally keep it in sport. Traction control, keep on. Creep function is a really cool feature. So just the same as a normal automatic, when you take your foot off the brake, it'll start to creep forward. However, um, when this car was originally launched, it didn't have creep mode. Creep mode was an additional software feature, which the guys in, in Fremont added, mm -hmm. and the cars were wirelessly updated, so now all cars have this. So it's a good example of how it actually works in reality. We can also see our recent trips. We can play around with our display settings, how bright we like it. Um, we can have a day mode, we can have a night mode as well, so it's not in your face. Good idea. <laughs> but keeping it on auto and also energy saving mode. And then just, um, if you do want to power down the car or put it into a tone mode, you can do so quite easily. So it's all fully personalizable. It's all intuitive. There's not 40 different buttons and dials, which you're not really sure what does what. It's simple to use. Just touch and go. Touch and go, exactly. And if you're an iPhone user, <laughs> it's pretty it's much the same. Pretty much the same. And is there an app yet? Yep, so there's, you there's, download the Tesla app. That's right, so you can have your Tesla app on your iPhone okay. where you can control features on your car such as your heating. So if it's a really, really cold day and you're in bed and you think, I want to defrost my car in advance, you can do it. So you walk into your nice, warm, cozy car. Excellent. So um, really good feature in Norway where Tesla Model S is currently the top selling car in Norway. So it's, it's usable, it's practical. It's a darn good car. Yeah. It's a darn good car. Okay. So, just ignore this. Just ignore this app right here. Can you sound okay? Can you sound okay? Okay, we'll leave that one. We'll leave that one. So. Okay, cool. So, you ready to go? Yep. I'll just do a quick loop around and then we'll swap over. Okay. So I'll just give you a demo. So, obviously we're driving in this. So how much did you take for a US leaf trade-in? 
Kidding. <laughs> Just kidding, kidding. Could not resist that one. All right. And here we are. I'm a passenger sitting on the left with no steering wheel because I'm a passenger. Why? I'm in the UK. Yield to the right, sir, on the left. You didn't see that on film, but there was a person trying to sneak out of some sort of SUV. Yes, they have SUVs in Britain, too, for all of my SUV driving friends. In the car club. So, so the really great thing about Model S, mm -hmm. from my driver's point of view, mm -hmm. is the weight distribution. Yeah. So with the, a large chunk of the weight is in the battery pack, which sits on the floor panel of the car, in between the two axles. So it's got very similar weight distribution to a mid-engine sports car. So, it means it handles brilliantly. We still got that performance. So 0 to 60 in 4.2 seconds. But it's effortless performance. You're not having to change down the gear and rev the engine hard to get that performance. It's on tap anytime. You can feel the weight on the bottom, yet it still feels like it's very handleable on the top. And we're on the left-hand side of the road. <laughs> Excuse my silliness. Do I get a pass for being from the U.S. <laughs> for being silly? My, mo my motto is easy lefts and frighty right turns. If I'm in the UK, it's the opposite, of course, where I live. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know what the little um, moniker would be for that. I'm just thinking easy lefts, frighty rights. <laughs> so I'll just take it up here and um, okay. we'll find a, a place where we can use some of the performance. Mm -hmm. Get the zero to 16. Three seconds. Four seconds. 4.2 four seconds. Four so four point two. We're coming up to a national speed limit. Yeah. Speed limit is 70. Miles, yeah, so 70. Okay. Yeah. So we're just cruising at 36 miles an hour. Okay. I put my foot down. Woo! Here we go! Woohoo! We're already, <laughs> we're already at 65. So <laughs> Take that, Chad Schwitters. <laughs> there you get that ring. Okay, that instant power is into a delivery. No offense, Chad Schwitters is one of a plug in America. The dial yeah. going green. So very similar to yeah, yeah. normal uh, engine braking. Right. Um, and I'll just I'll just go through here. We can do a quick handover. Gosh. Teeny tiny mini roundabout, which isn't even open. <laughs> On the brake. Foot on the brake. I can. On this, you have your gear lever on your right hand side. So down for drive, up for reverse, and in for park. That's what we're going to drive. And I should, this should be, I should be going my indicator, my indicator. Yeah. And that's the I cruise should. and all that yeah. stuff that I don't want to use today. Oh. We'll stop. Oh, there we go. Okay. Okay. Here we go, folks. Okay. You're riding along Seattle Electric Vehicle Association. First, we are going to pull out. We are going to look around and see if we are safe. Look over my shoulder according to the UK motor code quizzes I've been taking. Just so you know, I have been taking the quizzes. Thank you. Uh, so if you'd like to come back on yourself around the roundabout. Uh, okay, so now you're going to get me through the roundabout. So give way to the right. So give way to the right. right. Okay, indicate right. And then we just do a U-turn around right. the roundabout. All right, there's the roundabout. I was looking for the actual round part. This is a mini roundabout, isn't that correct? It's a mini it's one, yeah. that those are easy. He has to yield to me because I'm on his right, and the person behind me just needs to be patient. Thank you for being patient. And here we are on the left-hand side of the road. Oh my gosh, it's all backwards. <laughs> it's forwards to you. It's forwards to me, yeah. We're probably backwards in the U.S. Okay, so if you'd like to just follow this Range Rover, so we'll okay. go straight over the roundabout as such. All right. I'm not going to be on his tail though. I have to yield to the right. That's right. 
Yield to the right, yield to the right. Now, do you want me to go to take the immediate next left off the roundabout or go straight around it? The, the straight around it. Okay, all right, there's nobody. Oops, that Is person, it? what are they doing? Note the look of concentration on my face as a whole slew of cars comes through here, including one very interesting fire technical rescue unit, which I don't want to be visiting today. Now, is he going off to the exit? Yes! Okay, let's go. I can get it out of here before it. But get into the center right lane. So right, he has to yield to me because I'm on his right and then go straight. Yeah, Probably should have signaled. Ooh. You're very brave, Matt. That's okay. Just You're very to brave. I'm moving to the lane. slow lane. Drive on the left, overtake on the right, right? That's right. We should go. Thank you. This car's wider than my leaf. It is quite oh, wide. I didn't go. say leaf. What leaf? What Honda inside? <laughs> they all, my car club knows what I drive very well. So you feel comfortable? Yes. It's, it's very smooth. It's smooth. Um, I feel safer in a bigger car driving on the uh, left-hand side of the road. Yeah. Who knew I'd get my Model S truck in the UK? This was not expected at all when I made this trip. I simply came to bother Nikki. <laughs> Let's visit. All right. Oh, here comes a reduced speed. Oh, I can feel that regenerative braking. Yes, yeah. I can. It's very clear. 40. So Oops, often I'm you already use the regen brake instead of your actual brake pedal. So when you're coming down to a slower speed limit, mm -hmm. we'll come up to a, a large Not, roundabout. Uh, okay, get me through this one. Now, okay. which, am I going straight through all the way around? What's your okay. So sorry. That's all right. I hope they didn't damage the car. Otherwise, I owe you money. And come up at this okay. one. So all indicate right. left here. Oh, indicate left. And so we'll go through here. Got it. Well, my boyfriend, I, I've run over curbs when I first got the Leaf and the Honda because they're different sizes. Yeah. Even my little tiny Zen car, which is my first electric car, gave me trouble because it was so small. Zen. There we go. Is there any keep clears? No, I don't see any boxed yellow lines. No, so that's fine. I like the box yellow lines in the UK that say keep area clear. It's very understandable in the US. It just says keep clear sometimes and sometimes. Okay. Amber means it's about oh. to turn green. We go with the straight oh, arrow. A little more confusing in the US because it simply goes from red to green. There's no interim. There's no, yeah, yeah, there's no break. There's no yeah, warning. Stay in the middle lane, so stay where you are, just behind that white car. Oh, okay. Is that a puja? What is that? <clears throat> now that was not my fault. That was just on the road. Yeah, just, just keep following that white car. All right. Jolly good? Is that what you say? <laughs> uh, we don't often say that, no. <laughs> it's, it's, it's outmoded. Yeah. It's BBC, it's BBC Masterpiece Theater. Yeah. A bit more Downton Abbey, really. Well. Yeah, Downton Abbey. I haven't seen Downton Abbey yet, don't tell anybody. I'm sort of resisting. I'm hooked on the IT crowd. All right, yes. now I'm going to have to get over. That's ready. I have to yield to him because he's on my right. Yeah. Oop. And not hit the truck. Lorry. Garbage truck. Okay, yeah. just stay in this lane behind this van. Okay. And we're going to go all the way around the roundabout. <laughs> back up. <laughs> so as we go around the roundabout, just seems to go right. Mark Chatterley, I hope you're watching this. <laughs> you could be in the car with me virtually as I go around the roundabouts. over my shoulder, it's like I do in the UK driving test. Thank God I took some of those quizzes. <laughs> That's not completely. I also decided that I would take the Washington State practice test. I figured I was taking so many UK tests to see if I could still pass in my own state. <laughs> it's really the same types of questions. How many feet do you stop behind in this sort of condition? Yeah. Blah, blah, blah. A lot of it's common sense. I do oh. like this amber, okay. Okay, but just follow this car ahead, so stay okay. at the same lane. Okay, am I going, which exit am I taking so the roundabout? So you're gonna go all the way around, so um, just, All the way around, yeah, okay. That's right. So I'll tell so you when. Just stay, all right. Meaning just right. stay on the Stay, stay on same. the right, stay on the right, stay on the right. That's it. All the way full to the right, follow the car, I keep going. Keep going. I'm still around, and I've got the right of way, because I'm going all the way around. 
now, which is still... Move into the middle lane. Middle lane, except not where it says keep clear. And then... Langley Green? No, no so right here. stay where you are. Okay, follow this. What is and this? So it's going to Fabio, <laughs> Lona Driver. And okay. then we'll just follow, we'll go through here. Okay, there's no signal working still right there. This still a smart idea to signal even though there was no one there. And you can just stay in this lane. Okay. <laughs> Oh my gosh, I can't believe this. This is, I can believe I can. This is good. Thank you, Matt. Stop being silly. This is very exciting. Here are the squiggle lines, which means don't stop here. The zigzags, I call them squiggle lines. And we just stay in this lane. Let's go. Nice and easy. I can still go through in this lane. Is it green? Yeah, that's okay, because right. it's the right one that just says don't turn and right. And if we just stay in this middle bit here. The middle bit. Behind this taxi. Okay. Thank you. Seats are very comfortable. So this doesn't have the automatic. Okay, so you don't have the automatic um, windshield wiper on in this? Is that just in the Volt? No. It does have automatic wipers, yeah. You just don't have it set up that way today? Um, so you have two settings of auto, one which rarely comes on and one which comes on more often. Okay. Depending on the um, Severity. Prefer, yeah. Right. Okay, got it. Just curious about that. Does it keep going? Nikki was showing off of her windshield wipers in the Volt. Sorry I'm seeing all these other car brands, but I think everyone who's coming to test drive, regardless, is probably driving something else, or they'd already have a Tesla. Yeah, of so they may have a petrol car. And, um, That's gasoline go. in the US. <laughs> we just go straight ahead. Straight through the clearing? Okay. Yep, so straight over. Okay, no, you have to yield to me, person on the left. Right, and it gets quite tight here, so just... Oh, that's right, this is that road again. Mind the car, but... Um, I mean, mind the... Uh, it's tough to tell how wide this car is. It feels almost as wide as my Dodge van that I had for years, which is huge. Yeah. Sort of visualization, I pretend I have poles on me. This, this is a what? This is a big car. Now, the Tesla drivers in the club, you know that. I'm not used to it. It's been a long time since I had my Dodge van. Oh, the thing is still on the road. A friend of mine drives that thing. Cool, and we're back at oh Tesla Gateway. Oh my gosh, we're back. I have one chance to take out a pedestrian. This one, who's not yeah, yeah. looking. <laughs> he didn't look at me. Did he look at me at all? I don't think he looked at all. He looked over the car. Dude, I'm driving a Tesla. I'm gonna let you back it in. Yeah, sure, no worries. <laughs> I just, this has been a great. Oh, Matt, you've been very patient and very brave to take out an American driver. That's right. So, fill in the brake, and then you see um, just on the gear, push in. Push in, it's parked. And we're parked. We're parked. Pleasure. Sir, thank you. Now you you've got that. some story. You've got a story to tell when you go home tonight. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I can um, laugh. So, Deb, we're, we're now on the M23. Uh, we're doing 32 miles an hour on the M22. This is not normal, I should point out. But this it, is our freeway. It's deluging. It's, it's, it, it's heavy like the rain. rain has come very quickly. It was um, nice this morning. Beautiful sunrise and beautiful sunset last night in Bristol. But we did see those storm clouds, as you pointed out, coming over from yeah, Wales. Yeah. And, and here uh, it is. It's horrible. Oh, it's blue sky over there. There is blue sky. Maybe we can skirt it and then maybe we'll be back in. in oh, yes, I can see blue sky too. Do you see the blue sky? Maybe now? this is only up, transient. The left hand side of the car. <laughs> Maybe this is just transient. Um, so we had a, uh, a lovely time at the Tesla launch event. You had to, to, uh, a lovely chance to drive a, a Tesla Model S. And I got to talk one. about some of the announcements that were made last night. Now, as we said earlier on in the show, and I wrongly said earlier on in the show, um, the, uh, the Tesla Model S D doesn't come with two of the motors that are currently in the Tesla Model S. It comes with two smaller motors. Smaller. Smaller in size, about 188 horsepower in total, which is less than uh, than, than, than obviously the, the size of the current motors. But when you combine the two of them, it adds up to about the same power. So you're not losing anything. It's just changing where the power is distributed, basically. Which is the concept, as we were speaking um, about, is the four wheel drive. You want the power to go to all the wheels so that each one has its own traction and its mm -hmm. own its own sense, you might say, 
of what the road is feeling like, how it's behaving, and therefore how the car will behave right. in adverse conditions. Right, and you were saying that, that, that actually that's a very useful thing it for is. you to have. Um, Yes, I uh, lived in Boulder, Colorado for 12 years in the 80s and 90s and drove a Subaru, which had an on what they called back then an on-demand four-wheel drive. It wasn't automatically four-wheel drive because they hadn't really invented that yet. Um, so I'd have to put it in, didn't have to get out and lock wheels like they used mm -hmm. to do in the old days, but there was just a, a separate, there were two gear shifts in that particular model, an 86 GL wagon, in case any of you watching ever had one of those. But um, I lived actually in town for most of the times, but there were two years, I lived in a mountain cabin, you know, if you sort of envisioned the mountain cabin, um, not necessarily of logs, but kind of a, fun a funky, F-U-N-K-Y, um, mountain cabin. And I had to literally skid down the road to work every day, or every weekday to my job, and then skid wow. back up the mountain. It was only 12 miles, but it was a good 45 or 50 minute drive, and there were some hairpin turns. Four-wheel drive, very handy. So it's a four-wheel drive, Tesla Model S would, would do the trick. Yeah, do the trick. Uh, and of course, with the air suspension, yes. you could actually raise it up. On you could raise it up. I've driven it through through quite heavy water before, and it's been just fine. Well, we were also talking just about how hydroplaning is also equally as dangerous, and it's helpful to have the power there in case one of your tires hits the puddle and the other one doesn't, etc. Et and and this is essentially torque vectoring. That's how right. it works in torque this car. Torque vectoring, yes. So um, we also talked about some of the safety features um, and autonomy, autopilot features. Now, Georgi was very careful, as was Elon Musk last night, uh, early in the morning my time, to talk about the fact that the inclusion of the autopilot hardware does not mean that Tesla Model S will suddenly start driving itself. Um, no. This is like, this is a bit like a computer manufacturer mm -hmm. launching uh, new hardware and planning ahead Okay, we're gonna we're gonna launch this computer with, I don't know, twelve processors in it, and eventually, you know, you're gonna be able to use all twelve processors, and it's gonna be fantastic. But to begin with, you get six. We're just gonna give you six. Correct. And and then over the next, you know, couple of years, they add those processors, switch them on, as the software becomes more sophisticated, and eventually, you've got a more sophisticated vehicle, and that comes down to the the internet connected uh, nature of the Model S. It's, it's fully internet connected. It can download its software, update fresh software. And what I'm really thinking while I think of it is, sorry to interrupt, but it's, no. it, this really goes along with Tesla's whole business model of they build a large space and don't fill it up all the way, starting mm. with their way they sold the Roadster mm -hmm. to get the, the high buyers, the high paying buyers to provide the capital to produce the S and then they mm -hmm. expanded a factory but at the time that I visited the Tesla factory in 2012, um, they were only using a tiny little corner of this vast space but the space was there for them to use yep. as they came online and it was expansion so I'm thinking this whole hardware um, business with the auto drive they're doing exactly the same thing very consistently with mm -hmm. how they, Tesla thinks and I think that's wise. Room to grow. Remember when you were a kid and your shoes yeah, yeah. were too big in te September, yeah. but you got room to grow? Yeah, that, that makes total sense. And I think uh, we're, we're seeing a very promising future there for, for the autonomous drive technology. As, as, as I discussed with, with Tesla at the event, there, there is obviously some concerns about logistical nightmares and, yes. and legislative nightmares, should I say. Um, and they will take time. Um, to, they will take time to iron out. There's no other way of putting it, really. Now, one thing I'd like to point out a little sort of on that subject to the US watchers in the US is, is one thing that England or the UK does not have is some of the resistance from state governments to putting in direct sales stores. So Tesla is able to open stores here with, I guess I should say less red tape, but maybe different red tape, but not well, some they, of the they're just car dealers, getting. yeah. I mean, yeah, and it's quite just, common here for car companies to own showrooms. I mean, that's that's not unusual. And um, I like what um, he said, Georg was his name. I'm sorry, I missed Georgi. his name. Georg. Yeah, Georg, he also said is that Georg. there's been quite a success rate of bringing American businesses into the UK. Yes, um, yeah, that has been. So there's some that sort of been. deal, and I, I like to hear that. And I think um, he also mentioned, obviously, that the UK is one of the countries working hardest to try and encourage autonomous driving next to Sweden. They're the only this two countries it. in Europe which are, which are really working hard. Um, let's have a quick ad break. Um, 
and then we'll come back and finish off with the last segment of the show. We'll talk about some more of the big stories of the week. If you haven't uh, been to Transport Evolved before and seen Transport Evolved before, you're going to be thinking, what's this strange show where people are driving in a car in traffic and talking? Uh, no, we're not trying to rip off Robert Llewellyn's excellent carpool. This is just a special edition of the show. Normally we film it in a, sh in a studio and that studio costs time and money to run. Now, if you would like to help us by making a monthly donation, we would very, very much appreciate it. Now, to do that, what you can do is go to www.transportevolve.com and click on the donate button, which is on the right-hand side of the uh, page, on the right-hand rail to use the correct internet geek speak. And uh, you can choose there from uh, four different subscription options monthly subscription uh, through PayPal um, and any money you send us will be used directly to help fund the site, uh, pay for things like server bandwidth, uh, to help us pay for all the camera equipment and, and uh, the sound equipment that we use, uh, just to help us ensure that the quality of the show that we bring you is the utmost we can, the best we very can. Um, and if you can't afford to make a monthly donation, uh, there are two other options open to you. One of them is to make a one-off donation, which you can do, uh, which you can also make using bit Bitcoin, believe it or not, using the, the link really? on our they website. Yeah, we can do Bitcoin. Uh, and also, um, should you wish, should you can't, you know, if you're in this situation where you can't spend any money, just tell everybody about us. You know, promote our site on your website, link back to us, tell the world about Transport Evolved. If it's got, uh, if it's clean, cleaner, greener technology, if it's smart driving, intelligent driving, safer driving, effectively anything that makes the world of transport cleaner, greener and smarter then send them our way, www.transportevolved.com. And thank you for your support for the show, if you do, in fact, give us your support. So, part three. Part three, that was part two. Mm -hmm. And you're laughing because the way that we're recording this, I'm we're not quite being I'm sequential here. a good time. <clears throat> a That's good time, part laughing. three. Okay, so, part three. some interesting news this week. Um, and you've not seen the show notes, so I'm really throwing you in the deep end here. Um, <laughs> well, it's raining, isn't that appropriate? Yeah, Should yeah, I get my snorkel, in the deep, yeah. my fins out? <laughs> the, uh, the, the, the very, very interesting news this week coming from uh, Volkswagen in uh, Germany, which says that uh, the, uh, it was Dr. Neusen, the, 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 the head of, of drivetrain development, said that plug-in hybrids are a stopgap measure. I did read that. I actually didn't um, know about that. And and he said, look, plug-in hybrids are are something that is some are something that we're we're not going to see much of really beyond the end of the decade. Come the end of the decade, it's all going to be fully electric plug-in cars, and that's it. Which I think is excellent news, really, Deb. And I think that's astounding that someone from BMW. No, Volkswagen. Oh, it's Volkswagen. I'm yeah. sorry. God, why did I say BMW? Okay. <clears throat> <laughs> and would say that. I did read some of the news press releases last night. I really did. Um, blame it on jet lag. Um, anyway, uh, yes, for someone from Volkswagen to make a statement that forward and that determined, I would hope that would signal some things to the other car makers in the world. Well, you know, last week we, we covered the fact that Volkswagen, uh, a different Volkswagen boss in Japan, had said that hydrogen fuel cell cars just won't catch on outside of Japan and they're doomed to fail. And it does send a very clear message that Volkswagen really does want to have these longer range cars. And, and Dr. Neumann was talking about having EVs by the end of this decade, Deb, with yes. ranges in excess of, you know, two, 375 miles, miles per charge, again. which is beyond what the Tesla Model S can currently do. It does. But considering Volkswagen's success with their diesel cars, and I'm also looking at a couple of Volkswagens on yeah. the highway here, or the roadway, the carriageway, <laughs> um, right here. But, you know, this thing with the Volkswagen Golf would get a crazy mile on diesel. So I, I believe them. They've had yeah. some past successes. Yeah, they're very... And, and the, the thing, I mean, someone really criticised me a couple of weeks ago. Ah, why are you defending Volkswagen? They're just like everybody else. They're not really into the game. And you know what? The answer to that is Volkswagen's been making electric cars since 1978. Mm-hmm. They now, have. they have been making them in small numbers, and yes, admittedly, you know, I used to own a Volkswagen City Stromer Mark II, but it it wasn't half bad, really, as a car. I mean, you know, for, for its age, and yes, you know, it's been held back by battery technology, but Volkswagen does seem to be, you know, all those um, 
all those different uh, cars now, five different plug-in models in a year, Deb. Less yes, than a year. Five, they brought I mean, five plug-in cars to market, or at least announced them, which I think is astonishing. Which is, which is incredible. I mean, okay. And it's still amazing. This, this, this is like living in the old, in, in, the, in the US, we say the Wild West days when everyone was pushing forward and doing new things and traveling. But here you might say it's like the industrial age or anything where, where if you'd said six, seven years ago that I'd be driving, well, <laughs> I don't know the miles, but I'd be driving a Nissan Leaf even. Just mm. as much that they're mm. proliferating in, in Seattle. It used to be that you'd see one or two Leafs. That was only two years ago. 24 months later, it's not very long. I can't go to work without seeing at least 15 Leafs, an occasional S, some Volts. I mean, they're everywhere. Yeah. And the charging stations are going fast in. But yes, battery technology has always been the struggle. But look what's happened since the 70s with that Volkswagen. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. With these lithium ion batteries. I mean, look, it, it, cell phones, as you ever imagine. Yeah. I mean, and, and going happening. back to Tesla, that's the thing that obviously mm -hmm. Tesla's pushing on. Now, staying with Volkswagen for a second. Yes. Do you live long and drive electric? <laughs> do I live long and drive electric? Yes, a Volkswagen. <laughs> <laughs> so, all right, let's talk about this for a second. Um, uh, no, all right, so um, Volkswagen Germany, Germans are known for having, please don't be offended if you're German. Germans are known for having a slightly different sense of humour to the rest of Europe when it comes to what they like in adverts and how they like things to be advertised. And uh, William Shatner, mm -hmm. obviously uh, uh, Cap uh, Captain James Tiberius Kirk, uh, Captain from, Kirk. From, oh, the, uh, Captain from the USS Enterprise, mm -hmm. and uh, of course Mr Spock, uh, aka Leonard Nimoy, mm -hmm. uh, both took part in a German language advert for the entire Volkswagen plug-in family with the hashtag uh, VW Future. Now, the ad itself was kind of cute. Little boy spots Captain Kirk moving in. Little boy is a Star Trek fan and rushes off to get, you know, put his Starfleet uniform on and then he gets to have a ride in Captain Kirk's uh, e-golf. Um, Despite the whole strange, stranger danger thing, which you know, in the back of my mind was going, was kind of astonished that a little child would just jump into a car, even with William Shatner. I mean, with anybody. Um, but let's put that aside for one second. Interesting ads. Some of it worked. Some of it didn't. Um, you know, Leonard Nimoy has the best line: "Fascinating," uh, you know, fascinating um, at the end, which I thought was cool. Was it fresh, new, fresh, or is this just like it didn't do it for me like the funky, like the funky hamsters? But that's just a personal thing. <laughs> oh, I can't comment because I haven't seen that ad. But now I want to go look it up. And okay. Out okay. There. Well, we'll put it. We'll put it. We've, we'll we'll put, put it, put it in this in this thing here so uh, people will be able to see it. But um, <sighs> celebrities advertising cars, yay or nay? Depends on the celebrity, depends on the car, depends on the direction and the script. Yeah, this one didn't seem to have much in the way of script, it must be said. Um, and the ad was okay, but then they did a whole load of... Uh, I think they might have done better with Patrick Stewart. <laughs> yes, yes. But then <laughs> anything better with Patrick Stewart. Stewart. Or even with Sean Connery, they should have had... Dub now, if they did an ad... No, that would work better in Britain, I'm thinking 007. But well, it would work with universal. Tesla. Yeah. It would work with Tesla, 007. James Bond, you know, James Bond. Oh, now I'm getting strange ideas <laughs> about how we could work the whole James Bond thing into. Um, so if we've got um, shake and not stirred, we'd have electric, not petrol. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Think that about would that. Work. Electric, that would work. Not petrol. Oh, dearie me. Well, anyway, take take a look at the advert uh, if you're watching the show and let us know what you think um, in the comments. I'm, I'm, I'm in two minds. I like the ad, but I think that the extras are just a bit, uh, they're a little bit creepy and I can't put my finger on why. Maybe you can. All right. <clears throat> so, um, we have covered, what have we covered? We've done the Tesla, we've done Volkswagen. Uh, we haven't covered profitability of the Nissan Leaf. I think that would be a good thing to Okay, so Mr. Cover. Carlos Goen, speaking last week at the Paris Motor Show, said that the Nissan Leaf is now profitable. While the $5 billion investment made by Renault Nissan mm -hmm. in electric cars en masse has not yet paid back all of the money that was invested. Mm -hmm. 
the Nissan Leaf itself is now profitable, which is excellent news for plug-in vehicles everywhere, isn't it? Because As that a means... Leaf owner, I like that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So that means um, we are in a situation where uh, <clears throat> every Leaf that comes off the production line now is making money for Nissan. And sales just carry on going up, don't they? I mean, they do, and I need to correct, I'm actually leasing the Leaf, but either way, they're still getting my money, so. <laughs> yeah, yeah, so, you know, they're making money off the cars. This is only gonna mean good things for this Nissan. Well, forward. remember what I was saying earlier, that two years ago I'd see a Leaf occasionally, and now I, I can't leave my house without seeing 15 yes. Leafs a day, maybe even more, it just, I, 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 can't, I can't keep track of it. I was trying to keep track for a while, and I gave up. Oh. It doesn't mean there's hundreds of them, but it means there's dozens and dozens of them and more are coming online and they are selling them. Well, and I would say that I've seen, you know, regularly, I'll see, you know, three or four a day now. Mm -hmm. And I don't live in a particularly, well, I suppose in a particularly densely populated area. But Oh, it's only know. the third, what is it, third most city, biggest city outside? <laughs> it's one of the biggest Not cities huge. outside of London. Yeah, it's but I don't, I don't right. actually go into the city. I'm on the, the, yeah, you're the on fringes, the skirt, so I don't, I don't see that the much. Suburbs. Um, but, uh, <clears throat> you know, I think that's a good thing. Uh, staying with Nissan, though, and this is one that saddens me, and I don't know how you feel about this. Um, Shiro Nakamura, and I have to think about that twice, because my Nissan Leaf is called Hiro Nakamura, yeah. after, the, uh, after, the, uh, after the character Hiro Nakamura from the NBC okay. uh, show Heroes. Right. Um, but there's a guy who works at Nissan called Shiro Nakamura. Uh, he's on the board of directors. And, and he said uh, this week, uh, or last week at the Paris Motor Show, but the story broke this week, that, uh, you know, um, the, uh, the, the Nissan Leaf, the next generation Nissan Leaf, which we're respecting in 2016 as a 2017 model year, won't be as geeky. That's what I understand, that it's supposed to be, quote, more Less EV-ish. EV less EV-ish. Yeah. Well, th that's very interesting, Nikki, because I had a long discussion with uh, Stephen Johnson of the Seattle Electric Vehicle Association, our, our new president, who's been to, get taken over from Stephen Lowe. And we were discussing the LEAF, and what we, he asked me well, what I thought of the LEAF. Um, we were on, I was giving him a ride somewhere in my LEAF, and I said, I really like it. It's very comfortable. It's com really comfortable seats, <laughs> strangely enough. And... Um, and he's saying, he just says, why is it so ugly? I said, you think it's ugly? And we had this long discussion about what makes a car beautiful. And we both agree the Model S is beautiful. But I guess I'm less picky about my lines. I like the funny look of the leaf. I like it. And I like it's anthropomorphic. But then I'm on that kind of, I, as a person, stylistically, right. I quite and, and like and Stephen, the... Stephen drives... How I say yes. I mean, you know, he, and, and Stephen, his choice, he, he drives um, a converted... He has a Chevy S10. He's got a, um, pardon me if I'm wrong, Stephen, <laughs> but he also ha has converted a couple of, a Fiero for racing. Right. And he likes the long muscle cars. And, 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 and Jason, my, my boyfriend, he did not like the Leaf. Well, I thought the rear end looked funny, but he's a Mazda guy. You know, it depends on, I guess, who you are. And I'm, I don't know. And my thing is color of the car, really. Um, even the most beautiful Model S, when they get that steel gray color, and I'm sorry if I'm offending you if you've got the steel gray, but the battleship gray doesn't do it for me. But mine's more about color. Mm -hmm. But I'm, I'm kind of sorry that the Leaf will be more conventional looking, but well, I, you know it's a gamble. Maybe it's a risk worth taking to see if more people would buy I it. I can understand exterior. That's yeah. fine. What I don't want to do is to see the, the, interior. the interior become too geeky. I mean, you only have to look at the you mean ungeeky? Un un <laughs> ungeeky. Uh, you, you can. You only have to look at the inside of the vault to see what happens when you try and make a car not too geeky. There are so many buttons in this car, um, and I like my cars with buttons that are that are soft buttons. So, uh, depending on what you uh, what you do. Uh, Depending on where you press on the screen, the buttons change the function like they do in the in the, yes. in the second generation uh, Prius, and they do in the S as well. And, and in the Leaf, there is some of that. It's a bit of a combination of things. So I kind of. Um, like but it's a, I, I'm worried that they're going to do for the second generation Leaf what they did with the second generation, uh, sorry, the third generation Toyota Prius, which has put it. buttons everywhere for everything. There's one button for every function. Right, you're making me wish I could turn the camera to the. And I just, board right you know, I just. That doesn't do it for me. I like it. It does take up a lot of space. It does take up a lot of space. And it's cluttered. Mm -hmm. You know, it's the Apple aesthetic um, of having one button for one function. 
would never work. Sorry, the Apple aesthetic is to and not like, have one button for one function. Is to have just one, one, uh, one controller that can have many functions. And um, the Leaf does look well. It has the two. It has the two different sets of, of screen information. The one right behind the driver. <laughs> It would be over there in the UK. The, the driver's thing, and then it's got the little screen. I like. I do like the Leaf because it's got the screen, but it's not too big. Mm -hmm. It's not too small, and it has some manual buttons for things like your CD player. But other things that you set only once per trip or per yeah. week, per month, they are incorporated in. And I didn't used to feel that way. I used to feel like I liked more of the hard buttons, but I'm, I'm becoming a convert very rapidly to the, to the, the touch screen. Yeah. Thing. Yeah. yeah. All right. Well, I'd, I'd like to know what you think about, uh, you know, those of you who are watching at home about this, because I, I really hope that Nissan doesn't go that route. I understand why it needs to, and I think it's going to have to. But I want, and you know, Shirin Nakamura did say, look, you know, there will still be capabilities for people who want to show how geeky their Leaf is. I wonder what those will be. So I think well, that will be tech packages. I mean, I, I'd love to see like a Tesla-style touchscreen display in the centre of the car. Although I think you found that a bit distracting. Uh, you were driving in the UK at the time, so uh, we'll see. All right, final final story. Are you saying that driving in the UK is distracting? Probably. Probably no. Uh, all right, final story of the show. Uh, this is. Well, it's just two, two stories. The first one is... Um, two stories and I'm not saying live long and prosper. Okay, the two stories uh, are, number one, um, as Nissan and uh, obviously planning next generation leave, Volkswagen talking about longer range cars and EV being the way, Honda says, uh, it's not Honda, Toyota says hybrids are here to stay, we're not adding plugs, needing to add a plug, you know, the idea that we need to add a plug to our hybrids to make them competitive and efficient is 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 a myth. Uh, we're going to carry on developing hybrids and then we're going to hydrogen. Um, I, I, on some level, I can understand that Toyota wants to keep the technology uh, in a space that it feels comfortable with and a space that it's worked very hard on and a space that it's, that it's developed very well. Um, Toyota seems to be going after mainstream market now with hybrid technology and its drive seems to be use this hybrid technology that we've developed in these very geeky niche market cars and put them in everything and forget about the plugs because we're going to do the same thing to hydrogen. Wise or stupid? I just don't know. I, I'm not a fan of the hydrogen fuel cell and I was reading something, I can't remember if it was on Transporting Vault or if it was one of the other news outlets. Um, but that they're going to be giving away uh, hydrogen fuel cell in California, but how many s s hydrogen fuel stations are there? And I just, I don't know. It's going to be an interesting one, isn't it? And they're, and they're going to stick to that hybrid technology. You know, maybe they're trying to drive towards um, the larger countries, such as the US that's so big in the middle with lots of space in the Great Plains and the, the Midwest or Australia that has a lot of space. I don't know. Um, or are they just trying to do this because of the competition factor? It seems to me they would want to. I don't know. <laughs> Sorry, I'm not being more intelligent about this. I, 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 I don't know. I don't, I don't want to see a future, contrary to popular belief, and again, this upsets yeah. people when I say this. I'm not just about electric cars. People might think I am. I'm not. I'm after better uh, uh, transport, you know? I want to come up with a better transportation system that allows us to be cleaner, greener, safer, smarter. And if that is plug-in cars, brilliant. I'm already there, cool. I, I got involved with plug-in cars and future cars because of plug-in car technology and my perception that it was cleaner and better than what existed at the current time. I've owned plug-in hybrids before, and if someone come, if someone really does solve the problem of hydrogen, if someone really solves the problem of hydrogen, we can make it really, really cheaply. We can make it really cheaply and really green. Yes, I we know, can I refuel understand. these cars quickly. It's an abundant fuel source, and there's no mess, no fuss, and no environmental knock-on effects. Then, okay.
okay, then I'll listen. But similarly, if someone comes along in, you know, in five years time and goes, oh, we've developed this new car, it's better than electric, it's better than hydrogen, it's powered by fairy dust, and we've got a, you know, clean, green, renewable source of fairy dust, I'll buy a fairy dust car. Especially if it can do 400 miles on a, Zero, on, a, glitter on, a, on a glitter, <laughs> yeah, on a glitter. But that's my point. I mean, I don't think we should necessarily shut the door on these other technologies. We need to be willing to accept that those technologies can evolve just like uh, combustion engines. So it could and, be that and, I need to be a little more forgiving or a little more open. I just, I just haven't seen anything to convince me. No, I haven't yet. That's about the hydrogen. Yeah, but then uh, why isn't Toyota working on biodiesel or no, uh, I know. algae farms or... There you go, someone needs to make the fairy dust car. I think that's going to be the way for the future. All right, a final story. And this is a weird kooky one. This is the end, finally, that I like to put on when I've got guests on that I know will appreciate it. Deb, how long does it take you to plug in your car at night? Good heavens, about... Well, hell, here we go. Depends on whether the cell pack is empty, midway, or full. Which would you like, all three? Well, the or act of average. just plugging in. Yeah. A oh, you mean the actual... Actually actual plugging your car in. Good heavens, two seconds. Okay. Unhook, <coughs> walk to car, unhook from the... Okay. Church, I think so, it's, it's supply on this high as done, done. So you know these, you know these, these situations where you end up with um, <laughs> unnecessary tech? Correct. Oh dear. Stuff <laughs> that people have designed yes. that is completely unnecessary. I saw a video this week of a company that's designed an arm, a robotic arm. Oh, that plugs in for you. That plugs your car in for you. You park in the garage and this arm comes out from the wall <laughs> and plugs the car in. Oh my gosh. Oh, oh, How oh. have you ever lived without it? I, I, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. And poor me without a garage, as you say in uh, Britain, <laughs> a garage. I, just, I have off-street parking, I've got the driveway, and it's pouring rain. It still takes two seconds to plug <laughs> in the car. And that way I can feel that the plug has gone in and it's connected, and that my, my uh, way, charging thing yeah, goes yeah. beep, 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 and then the lights start flashing. <laughs> so you can feel it All right. Well... But, there we you are. know, let's hope that the last laugh isn't on up. Maybe it'll become <laughs> the next thing and everyone will be sitting over tea or drinks and going, so how's your plug-in arm today? Oh, it's just great. <laughs> and on that note, we'll finish. Deb, thanks for joining us today. Um, where can people find out more about you? And thanks for coming <laughs> to the UK as well. <laughs> thank you for gu guesting me, hosting me. Uh, thank you for being willing for me to call you up with, hi, we've never met in person, although we've Skyped before. Can I come bother you? <laughs> I'm going to be forward American. That being perfect. Um, um, yes, who am I? Well, the last time I checked, um, I am Deb Seymour. I drive a 2013 Nissan Leaf. I am a web designer, musician, and obviously EV fan and enthusiast from Seattle, Washington. You can find out more about moi and my music at www.debseymour.com. That's the music site. And then there is the green site, which is about all things green, called Deb Goes Green at www.debgoesgreen.com. That is my personal blog about my personal efforts to try and live, as Nikki says, the neater, cleaner, greener life without giving up the trappings of uh, modernity, like, yes, I take showers and I, you know, I have hot water and hot heat in my house and I drive cars, but doing things such as adding a solar hot water system to my house in Seattle, blah, blah, blah. And it talks about me trying to keep my trash down and my gasoline consumption. So, you know, it's take what you want and leave the rest from my site, but do check me out at um, www.goesreen.com. And for those of you who live in the North Pacific Northwest of the United States, if you are interested, you may go to www.seattleeva, that's Seattle plus Electric Vehicle Association .org. That's the Seattle Electric Vehicle Association, our local club, which is the second largest chapter of the National Electric Vehicle Association in the States. Um, we're in constant competition with the folks down in the San Francisco Bay Area. Sometimes we're bigger, sometimes they're bigger. I think we're bigger. I don't know. I, we had some new members join last week, and I guess last month's meeting had eight new folks to it. But we're in a friendly competition to see who can get the most EVs and the most <laughs> members of our association. And uh, definitely want to say a shout out to uh, the EV gang. And also, uh, hello to our friend Brad Horton if you're watching. <laughs> Excellent. In uh, Illinois, another Volt driver. Excellent.
excellent well uh, we'll be back next week at the usual time of 6 p.m british summer time uh, we are getting to that time of year when the clocks start to go back but it, uh, all the times i give you are based on british times so as soon as the british clocks go back that's when i will change when i stay i'll start saying greenwich mean time but it's british summer time next week 6 p.m on sunday uh, we'll have some great guests lined up for the show in the meantime don't forget to come and look at www.transportable.com for all the ev news that's fit to print you can subscribe to our channel on youtube and other places and, and we'll be back next week and one final thing in case you didn't know you guys go back to uh, daylight the winter time hour is an overlap where the yes we do a, i think is that next sunday or the two sundays there will we be go back sunday, on the second the second and ours is later the second and ours is after 20 that, something 20 something so there'll be a strange overlap where it's and, and the time difference is different but i'll let nikki walk in yeah we'll, we'll we'll sort that out when it happens uh but until next week folks thanks for joining us and don't forget and to plug in see ya bye